So after we have discussed what are convex polyhedrons, let's talk about regular polyhedrons. Now to understand the concept of regular polyhedrons, you should know what are regular polygons and what are congruent polygons. These two concepts are we have studied in grade 7 geometry. But, but let's discuss it real quick. So you have this square here. So in a square, all the sides have equal measurements, have the same measurements. That makes this particular polygon, that is this, this in this case we have a square, a regular polygon because all the sides are equal. Now, imagine that this is square 1 and this is square 2. Now this is square 2 again has the same measurements. That is, this is A, that is A, this is A, this is A. So the measurement of square 1 and measurement of square 2, uh, the, these two measurements are equal. It means that these two squares are actually congruent. And it further means that if you take this particular square and if you try to superimpose it on square 1, that makes it a, a, a congruent polygons. Okay. Now if you are wondering that why are we discussing uh, the concept of regular polygons and congruent polygons here. So let's understand this. You have a cube here and you have a tetrahedron here. Okay. In the case of cube, in the case of cube, you have six squares. You have six squares. This front face, the, you know, at the back side, the face at the back side, this right side face, this left side face, the top face, the bottom face. So you have six squares. It means that you have six faces that are made up of six squares. Now squares are what? They are regular. They are regular polygons. Okay. So this is the first criterion for a regular polyhedron. The second one is that Imagine that you take out this front face, okay, you separate this front face from this particular cube and you have the square here. Then focus on this right side face, you separate this right side face from this cube and you keep it here. Now tell me, are these two squares not congruent, right? They are congruent, right? So the second is they are regular polygons and should be congruent. It means that if they are regular and congruent also, it means that all the faces, all the faces have to be of same size and shape, same size and shape, same size and shape. We have a square here. So all the faces have to be square. Okay. They all have to be square and of the same size. Only then they can be congruent. Okay. One last criterion, you have total three criteria that you take any vertex, you take any vertex, let's say that this is the vertex. So tell me at this vertex, how many faces meet? How many faces meet at this particular vertex? So this top face, that is this one, this right side face and this front face. So at, at this particular vertex, three faces meet. Now you can try and take any vertex. You will find that on every vertex you take uh, on a cube, uh, every vertex on a cube, uh, at, at that point, three faces meet. At a given vertex, three faces meet. Okay, so this is the third criterion that at every vertex, equal number of equal number of faces should meet. So if these three criteria are satisfied, then you will say that your uh, particular diagram or solid object is a regular polyhedron. Another thing, the second name of regular polyhedron is platonic solids. Okay, here you have a tetrahedron. In a tetrahedron, you have four 
triangles. You have four triangles. Now we know that the triangles have to be regular. It means that they have to be equilateral triangles, right? They have to be four equilateral triangles. Now, they since they have to be congruent, it means that they are of the same size. They are of the same size. It means that if you if you focus on this particular vertex, let's say that this is this particular vertex is not towards you, but it's away from you. Okay, let me help you visualize this particular tetrahedron. So this is phase one. This gray one is phase two, right? This is phase two. This particular bottom phase is phase three. And the front one, the largest triangle that you are, that you can see here, is actually the phase four. That is the front phase, that is the transparent phase. So four phases made up of four equilateral triangles. They are, since equilateral triangles are regular polygons, so first criterion is met. The second is congruent. So it means that if you take this, let's say that you take this particular triangle, the base one, you take this particular triangle base one out from this tetrahedron and then you take this side triangle, the face, triangular face from the side one. So let's say that you have taken out these two triangles. Now since we know that these are four equilateral triangles and are of same measurements, it means that if you take this particular triangle then and try to superimpose it on the first triangle, that is the bottom one face, it will completely cover on this one. So it is the triangles are regular, the triangles are congruent also, that is of the same size. The next one is at any given vertex, at any given vertex, this, uh, the same number of faces will meet. So let's take this particular vertex, this vertex. So on this vertex, you have this one face, right? And this you have the gray one as second face and the bottom face is a third one. So at any given vertex, you'll have three faces. Okay, you'll have three faces in this case. You can try with uh, four other vertices. So again, this is a regular polyhedron. And why this is important that at every vertex you should have equal number of faces. I'll show you with one diagram. This is an image. Okay. So in this particular image, you have total number of six faces. Face one, two. At the back side, you have three triangular faces, three equilateral triangular faces. This gray one, this yellow one, and at the back side of uh, this one. Now look at this top portion. This is phase one, triangular phase. This is phase two, and again at the back side of you know this upper portion. So again, you have three equilateral triangular faces. Okay, and these six equilateral triangles are of equal measurements. Are of equal measurement okay but if you take this particular vertex let's say that you take this vertex on this vertex you have one face you have this another face and the back side of these two faces okay that joins the upper portion so one face two face and the third face so at this particular vertex you have three faces Okay, but when you take this vertex, this vertex, you have this triangular face, so face one, you have this triangular face, so face two, then again, so two triangular faces from the lower portion and one triangular face from here, the upper portion, and one triangular face from here. At this means that at this particular vertex, you have four faces. You have four faces that meet at this particular vertex. It means that this particular figure, even though is made up of regular polygons and polygons are congruent also, but the vertices, the vertices have different number of faces that are meeting there. 
Okay, so here you have four faces that meet at this vertex and here you have three faces that meet at, at this vertex. So this is a non-irregular polyhedron. Okay, what about this one? Again, imagine that this is a cube and on the top of this is a pyramid, right? On the top of it, you have constructed a pyramid with a square base. But since you have six squares here, but on the top of it, you have four triangular faces, four triangular faces, squares, triangle. They cannot be congruent. They cannot be congruent. They cannot be equal in size and shape. Size and shape is important. Both size and shape are important. Okay, so this is again a irregular polyhedron. What about this one? So in this case, you have a square base and then you have four equilateral triangular faces on the top of it. It's a kind of pyramid. It's a kind of pyramid with a square base. But since you have a square base and on the top of it are four triangular faces, even though you have, you know, these are equilateral triangular faces that are of same size, okay, but here you have a square and four triangular faces that makes this figure a irregular polyhedron, a square and triangular faces, right? What's about the, uh, in the case of cuboid? In the case of cuboid, you have six rectangles. You have six rectangles. Now, rectangles are irregular polygon. They are irregular polygon because length and breadth are, are not of equal measurement. So irregular polygon, that makes it uh, uh, an irregular polyhedron.